Hey YouTube, Blue Spruce 786 here. Episode 3 of the Timely Gate. We'd done some work last time, changing the outside of the book, got into the inside and, and roughed out the history of the elves and those involved. I've uh, further fleshed out the seven tribes, come across some more reading that I found to be interesting. Here's another one of the folding points. That's what I've taken to calling these places in the book with images from, from the actual trip to Egypt. It's my belief that you need to incorporate something from your own mind over, over those images. And when you do that, it will create structure through the book, linking, linking it. I found this black and white that I thought was appropriate. Uh, Egoptian, I think is how I'm going to pronounce this. Egoptian imagery has a consistency that amazes me. Spanning 3,000 years, the sculpture and architecture hold to visual conventions and mythical structures like those of no other culture. That's what we're talking about, is the elvish culture. Of the tribes, the youngest is the mountain elves. They are the most robust, the shortest lived. Perhaps they have souls, as men do. Uh, they are accepting of their mortality. They work hard. They live in the mountains. And these are elves that you would run into and, and meet. You know, not not such pronounced pointy ears and thin faces, more more human looking, perhaps like small humans. They build houses and settle settle in the high remote places. Akin to air. The she are the people of the mounds. They are the sixth tribe of elves. As the numbers get higher they, the elves are long more long lived after whatever disaster befell them and forced them to leave the Fey. Such was the, uh, the way things shook out. Banshee, or Bean Shade. Bean She? Yeah. Woman of She. Any woman who announces the coming of death by wailing or keening. This was an image that I wanted to use to represent all of the tribes. I thought there's specific locations throughout this image here. So we got out the French curve and we highlighted those. This is a piece of paper that I sprayed some cooking spray on, wax, to, to get a more clear see-through effect. And then I took the uh, cuneiform writing symbols that we found in section two on the pyramid of uh, earth was it air i forget but we took those symbols and applied them one for each tribe so we have the mountains and the sky three trees and pyramid i believe that's going to be the gray elves uh, the high elves the high elves are the ones that are trapped still in the fey subjugated by whatever creature they lured there or summoned Not all the pages have been used yet. You know, perhaps this is more information about the mountain elves. I haven't decided. Here's the gray elves. Of those that escape the Fae, they are the most powerful, but also the most alien. Uh, they're very tree-like. I altered this picture with these roots. The trees he had looked like they were planted along a thoroughfare, a sidewalk. So I put roots in with some ink and a, a brush and some glue here with more more debris to sort of do away with the perfect little spheres there. I think I might increase the tops of these trees too. And it's interesting to note there's eight trees. You know, maybe a lost tribe or the keepers of the eight ways. 
all the elves interact with one another. They, they know each other. They don't necessarily get along. I think, in fact, they, they hate each other in a way. But the way in which they do relate is hinted at in these pictures. And with the gray elves, I believe it is through the roots. The roots of trees are all connected. They all work together, regardless of the species. The shadow elves, the grell, I think I've heard them called. Much like the mountain elves, they're robust and hardy. Number four, as far as longevity, so they live for a lot longer. I was thinking like a thousand years. Um, they have the symbols of air and earth and water on their page. Uh, this one here, I covered up Egypt. Another one of the words with a picture of something from Egypt. Oh, a dead barrel of some sort or other. I think these are the dark elves. The drow. Dower. Dowre. I don't think I'm going to call them drow. But they're certainly a, a feminine elf. And I don't think living in the underdark is, is their theme either. I think it's a little bit different. Maybe they worship the night and the stars. This kind of looks like the big circle of the outer plains a little bit. So maybe they're planeswalkers. Back to the triangle of air. Oh, that's what I wanted to say. This represents air in the book. Uh -huh. The author, Mr. Eli, used this picture of Earth, and I figured it out. It, you're at the apex, you know, we're up here looking down at the Earth and the water. So you see Earth and water, and we're up in the air looking down on it. It's kind of clever. And that leaves fire. Fire is the mind, the mind which sees. And that's what the book is about. The book binding is making the mind solid so that it can accommodate the folding that will have to take place in order to, to actuate the gate. I'm uneasy about his, uh, this picture. I don't know. I'm not sure I'm going to keep it like that and I'm not sure I can undo it. So I don't know where we stand as far as that goes. There's a diagram here. I don't know if you can see it, but Surrounding the Sphinx are these lines, vectors. There's seven of them. So I thought one, one point where each tribe of elves views the Sphinx from. These are the high elves. The ones who are stuck. Here's the gray elves. They escaped, but they're low. They, they're down here you know, near subjugation, as are the shade elves. The dark elves are over on the side with more freedom. You know, a way, a way out through this. Whereas the high elves are trapped in this valley. Here's the mountain elves high in the air. forget who this is. I didn't write down a note. Here's the she, the pyramid behind them. But again, in the air. And the elves of the air, I didn't even write down. I don't think they're going to be a, a playable or meetable race or anything. I think they're going to be immortal. They're the last number. I was a little bit concerned when I started putting the symbols to different elves and whatnot. Uh, about who was going to be the last one, how that worked. Because I wanted the high elves to be immortal. And there's three after them. The she, the fallen, 
and the sky elves. But that works for me. Those those four can all be immortal. The other four are not, no longer. Uh, here's the water elves. They're represented on the, the first page by the tree that has fallen over and, and, and died. Perhaps they're not actually elves anymore. Perhaps they're, they're extinct and there's ruins left. I've had this picture for a long time and I've been meaning to, to make a map out of it. You know, it's a puzzle for the PCs, you know, this door, the, the fountain, you know, just use this picture for a map. I thought it might make a nice ruin. You know, maybe they were investigating what happened to the water elves. And they could go, it could be centered around that. I wanted to flip back and talk a little bit more about the Book of Fire. I think that's what ties everything together as you read through this. <clears throat> this is what I started with this morning. This had more letters here, so I cut out these squares from my pieces and uh, covered up the letters. It was tough matching the colors. I ended up going with contrasting colors rather than trying to, to match up the same colors. So you can just see the, the letters behind it poking out to get an idea of the original color. I thought it might be important. Uh, this is what I wrote. It would be Tyrannus's notes. The Book of Fire outlines the process of pointing and folding one's mind that is the key to actuating the greater book. The binding instructions must be closely followed and incorporated into the procedure, else one's mind is at risk. So he's certainly been going through this. I also had the idea that this book should be self-replicating. That Tiernus would not have started writing in it and, and manipulating it the way he did without guaranteeing that there was a second second one available. So he must have found a cache of them somewhere. And the only reason that, the only way that could happen is if in certain circumstances the book recreates, uh, makes, makes more of itself. Oh, this is the, the book on fire. And here we have the seven circles and kind of a Venn diagram and they, they go off this way. These lines, I was wondering. I think there's a lot of material there as far as circles of protection against different kind of elves, you know, to protect your mind. Maybe elves have a sort of mental domination effect, or maybe the, the creature that drove them out of Fey that, that has subjugated some of them, that, you know, that maybe that. I mean, that's what this is, to protect your mind from that. Anytime now that there's uh, something involving mind and fire and protecting yourself from it, I put one of the little squares. I had a few left over. Here's the... Uh, I like this picture. The eye. It reminded me of his image with the map for air. I thought the eye would be looking down, and so the earth is down here, and then water over here, and this would be air, the eye, and up here is fire, little pieces of fire carrying us along through this journey. I was going to use that image for one of the, uh, the tribes, but I decided against it. I think I still need one for air, so maybe there'll be air. You know, the immortal elves that escaped Fae and really had nothing to do with it. And again, I think that'll be a good race for you know, ruins and long-lost artifacts. Very powerful nature. At any rate, so that's where we are. I want to thank everybody for all your input and help so far. This is a lot of fun, and if anybody's got any other ideas about the elvish tribes and, and how the she would act and... You know, what are the shadow elves? Uh, what, what could have happened to the fallen, the lost elves? Uh, what are these air elves? They're immortal. They don't even have, have an image here, I think. Oh yeah, they do, it's this one. So the sky elves, the mountain, mountain elves that are like people, they build things. Three trees in the pyramid, the gray elves, defined by trees. Trees are Trees are long-lived, hateful beings, in a way. 
when you start to examine them, they, they are prone to acts of violence that only they can see because their, their time frame is so much different from our own. And yet, at the same time, they're, they're all interconnected. They're strange alien creatures with an intellect that we don't see just because it takes so long uh, that the time scales are so different. But it is there, nonetheless. And I think, I think that's who the Grey Elves are going to be, these tree people. All right. Wow. We're over 15 minutes. This is Blue Spruce 786. Thank you very much for your time. This is a lot of fun. And I'll see you guys later.